You've survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the Black Man with a Gun show. This week, the story of Wounded Knee and a product review on the Walter Arms PPQM2 by Michael J. Woodland. And a recap of what I did last weekend in Florida. This portion of the show is brought to you by Black Man with a Gun Reloaded. You can get your autographed copy from me directly by emailing me at blackmanwithagun at gmail.com. For only $20, Black Man with a Gun Reloaded is an autobiographical book about gun control, how I became a trainer, an activist, a speaker for the Second Amendment. This book has a glossary that will make you sharper. It belongs on the bookshelf of every gun owner. Black Man with a Gun Reloaded. Email me at blackmanwithagun at gmail.com today. It's also available on Amazon without the love. Blackmanwithagun.com Ken Blanchard's Pro Gun Podcast. After John and Wayne leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance to keep us all together and on the same sheet of music. We're going to get on with episode number 607, Gun Control will Kill You. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, a little history. This week in history, I want to take you back to December 29th, 1890, decades before the 1924 guarantee of constitutional rights for Native Americans, when federal agents murdered 297 Sioux Indians at a place called Wounded Knee Creek on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Before the Native Americans were killed by the agents of the state, they were notified that the 7th Cavalry had come to confiscate their firearms quote, for their own safety and protection. I don't need a DNA test to let you know that most of the original Americans in this country originate from Native American roots, from African roots, from Irish roots, from English roots. Those four groups are what made up North America. We're all brothers and sisters, but it wasn't pretty how we got that way. But I digress. Here's a short version from the Sioux leader named Turning Hawk. He said these people were coming toward Pine Ridge Agency, and when they were almost on the agency, they were met by the soldiers and surrounded and finally taken to the wounded Knee Creek, and there at a given time their guns were demanded. When they had delivered them, the men were separated from their families, from their teepees, and taken to a certain spot. When the guns were thus taken and the men were thus separated, There was a crazy man, a young man, a very bad influence, and in fact, a nobody, among a bunch of Indians, fired his gun, and of course, the firing of a gun must have been the breaking of a military rule of some sort, because immediately the soldiers returned fire and indiscriminately killed everybody. This historical account, it seems, makes two points for those resistant to gun control. One, even when government orders disarmament, and the majority obey, there is always the possibility that somebody will not. And two, when one bad apple stirs the wrath of the state, it is much easier for agents of the government to react by systematically annihilating innocent people with impunity when they have first been disarmed. I bring this up to you because every time you hear of a lone black man killed in a city, all it takes is a loud rapport from a backfire of a car, from a firecracker, from a firearm itself, the word gun itself, or just a fear that the police hold. And one shot rings out, and every police officer around them opens fire. This isn't just happening today. It's been happening forever. I'll let you know this not as an excuse, but as a fact. That is a natural response. 
You've seen it in gangster movies. You've seen it in comedies. Think about that for a minute. It's tragic whenever it happens. But let's go back to history. On the morning of December 29th, 1890, the Sioux chief, Bigfoot, and some 350 of his followers camped on the banks of Wounded Knee Creek. Surrounding their camp was a force of U.S. troops charged with the responsibility of arresting Chief Bigfoot and disarming his warriors. The scene was tense. Trouble had been brewing for months. The proud Sioux found their free roaming life destroyed, the buffalo gone, themselves confined to reservations dependent on Indian agents for their existence. In a desperate attempt to return to the days of their glory, many sought salvation in a new mysticism preached by a Paiote shaman called Wovanka. Emissaries from the Sioux in South Dakota traveled to Nevada to hear his words. Wovaka called himself the Messiah and prophesied that the dead would soon join the living in a world in which the Indians could live in the old ways surrounded by plentiful game. A tidal wave of new soil would cover the earth, bury the whites, and restore the prairie. To hasten the event, the Indians were to dance the ghost dance. Many dancers were wore brightly colored shirts emblazoned with images of eagles and buffaloes. These ghost shirts, they believed, would protect them from the blue coats' bullets. During the fall of 1890, the ghost dance spread throughout the Sioux villages of the Dakota reservations, revitalizing the Indians and bringing fear to the whites. A desperate Indian agent at Pine Ridge wired his superiors in Washington. Quote, Indians are dancing in the snow and are wild and crazy. We need protection, and we need it now. The leaders should be arrested and confined at some military post until the matter is quieted, and this should be done now. End quote. The order went out to arrest Chief Sitting Bull at the Standing Rock Reservation. Sitting Bull was killed in the attempt on December 15th. Chief Bigfoot was next on the list. When he heard of Sitting Bull's death, Bigfoot led his people south to seek protection at the Pine Ridge Reservation. The army intercepted the band on December 28th and brought them to the edge of the Wounded Knee to camp. The next morning, the chief, racked with pneumonia and dying, sat among his warriors and powwowed with the army officers. Suddenly, the sound of a shot pierced the early morning gloom. Within seconds, the charged atmosphere erupted as Indian braves scurried to retrieve their discarded rifles and troopers fired volley after volley into the Sioux camp. From the heights above, the army's Hotchkiss guns raked the Indian teepees with grape shot. Clouds of gun smoke filled the air as men, women, and children scrambled for their lives. Many ran for a ravine next to the camp only to be cut down in a withering crossfire. When the smoke cleared and the shooting stopped, approximately 300 Sioux were dead. Bigfoot among them. 25 soldiers lost their lives. As the remaining troopers began the grim task of removing the dead, a blizzard swept in from the north. A few days later, they returned to complete the job. Scattered fighting continued, but the massacre at Wounded Knee effectively squelched the ghost dance movement and ended the Indian Wars. This is a sad point in history. But how many times have you heard of people talking about not surrendering and what they would do if the government came for them. Pause for a moment and think about it. Let me know. Send me an email about your thoughts about wounded knee, about shootings of any type. This is more than just range stuff. This is this affects us all. I want to know your thoughts about the government and gun control and confiscation not tenfold hat stuff I don't want to hear any of that I want some really good dialogue some conversation points okay MarylandShallIssue.org it's an all volunteer nonpartisan organization dedicated to the preservation and advancement of gun owners rights in Maryland it seeks to educate the community about the right of self-protection, the safe handling of firearms, and the responsibility that goes with carrying a firearm in public. MarylandShallIssue.org This is the group, your group, the grassroots group in the state of Maryland. Join us, no matter where you are, 
MarylandShawIssue.org. I want to take the next few minutes and let you know that I've created a new podcast for the Second Amendment for Spanish speakers called El Segundo Edicto, and it's hosted by my friend and brother from the Latin Gun Owners Group, Carlos Alvarez. You can check it out at el number two e dot com. How you doing, Carlos? Maravilloso. Te habla Carlos Alvarez aquí en el programa Segundo Edicto. You got that? Check it out. Segundo Edicto. Dot com. Next up, Michael J. Woodland from m-wtactical.com is going to review the Walter PPQ M2. Take it away, little big brother. Thank you, Ken, and welcome to another Tips and Review segment. I am Michael Woodland, and today we're going to be talking about the Walther Arms PPQ M2 handgun. For those who follow me, you know that I am on a quest to advance in the world of competition shooting with my Walther Q5 match. Today, we're not going to talk about competition shooting, but more along the lines of what I selected to be my everyday carry, or EDC, with the Walther Arms PPQ M2. We're going to begin with how the PPQ is presented in the carry case. The box is something that you can use for many years to come, but unlike other manufacturers who present your firearm in a cardboard box or a cheap plastic box, Walther presents you the carrying case where it can be used when you check your firearm when flying. Yes, this box comes with levers where you can slide them left to right and place a lock on it as well. Before you ask, yes, it is TSA approved. Making our way to the inside of the carrying case, it is lined with foam that gives you the presentation of a custom carrying case where everything that comes with your handgun has a place to sit and to cut out foam. The PP2 comes with the required DOJ lock, red chamber flag, two 15-round magazines, a magazine loader, two extra back straps, initial target paper, instructional manual, and the Walther PPQ M2. The two extra back straps come in small and large since the medium back strap is already on the handgun. The PPQ M2 stands out and gives me the same feel as my Q5 match, so there is no different feel I have to get used to. Operation of the handgun is on par and does not take away from the interaction just like the Q5 match. In my mind, I will consider this to be my Q2.5 since it is a smaller version. Hmm. My use for the PPQ M2 outside of doing various training and just shooting will be more for when I conceal carry. Dependability and functionality is what you look for when you conceal carry, and Walther is that brand that I can stand behind and know it will perform when needed. Let's start off with the hand grip and work our way around the firearm. Their grip is made with a non-slip cross-directional pattern that will provide comfort and ease with controlling. It truly feels comfortable in my hands. I am big on getting stippling work done to my grips, but will hold off for some time and run the PPQ in its original state before making any changes to it. Moving up to the slide stop, it is an ambidextrous slide stop that is long enough to eliminate the need to search for a small tab or indent. For those who like to use gloves while shooting, this slide stop was designed for you. For those of us who don't, there is no way you will miss the slide stop in training or when it counts. There are slide serrations on the rear and on the front on both the left and right side. The front serrations can be used to assist with pulling the slide to the rear, but the rear serrations are more designed with a deep channel cut that will assist even with wet hands when charging the slide to the rear. The sights that come on this handgun are a three-dot polymer low-profile setup that is adjustable for windage. When adjusting the windage, it moves two centimeters at 25 yards. Making our way down to the Picatinny rail, it has what looks to be two and a half rails for the use of accessories that can accommodate a light source or an attachment that can assist with dry fire practice. Like the Q5, the PPQ M2 has a red indicator to show when the handgun is loaded. On the right side of the serration cuts, 
on the rear end of the ejector is where this indicator is located. Now, the trigger is advertised to be the best on the market from the factory. From what I gathered from other handguns, this claim seems to be true. The trigger will start its travel with 5.6 pounds of pressure with a reset that comes in at 0.1 inch, one tenth of an inch, to allow for a faster follow on shot. They did say the best on the market, right? Hmm. Are you ready to place your order yet? It gets better. Even though this handgun does not come with the physical safety, it does have three internal safeties overall. A firing pin block for safe carry, a drop safety, and the trigger safety. If you are one who likes to use technical data, let me try this for you. The PPQ I own comes in at 9mm with a barrel length of 4 inches, a trigger pull at 5.6 pounds, comes with two magazines that house 15 rounds, overall length of 7.1 inches, height is 5.3 inches with a 1.3 inch width with three auto safeties and come in with an empty weight of 24.5 ounces. Whew. Now, the deal gets even better. Walther has two programs that kicked off on February 15th. The deal is so impressive, it's a win-win for everyone. The program is called the Shoot It, Love It, Buy It program, and you can check it out by going to waltherarms.com. These guys are really standing behind their product, and I like that. If you are looking for a quality handgun that you can use for everyday carry, then the Walther Arms PPQ M2 can be the answer for you. My search shows that some places online are selling the PPQ for as low as $449. Not bad if you ask me. For those who are looking to contact me, visit blackmanwiththegun.com and under the About tab, click on my name, Michael Woodland, and shoot me an email at info at m-wtactical.com or call 803-250-1256. Please, if I do not answer, leave a voicemail or a text message, and I promise I will get back to you. Until next time, keep shooting, Keep practicing and have fun. Back to you, Ken. Crossbreed holsters are some of the finest holsters in America. They are imitated for a reason. They sell holsters, belts, modular systems. The U.S. company that my friend Mark Craig had started in 2005 has been a supporter for you and I for almost a decade. Crossbreed holsters has raised the standard for customer service in the holster industry through its two-week tried-free guarantee and a lifetime warranty. You tried the rest, now get the best. Go to crossbreedholsters.com and tell them Ken sent you. Crossbreedholsters.com All right, last week's show, I gave you a little song and dance and told you that I was going on some vacation time, a working vacation. Let me tell you what actually happened. I went down to the Podfast Multimedia Expo in Orlando, Florida. And while it was cold as I don't know what up here, I got a chance to uh, hang out by the pool hang out by the bar, hang out with some cool people who are making a difference in the world through podcasting. If you're a content creator, you do YouTube stuff, you do uh, podcasting like me, that was the place to go to learn how to do a little bit better, to see what the pros were doing. They had the YouTube rich folks there. They had the folks in podcasting. They were making like six figures a month. Yeah, podcasters doing that. You got a chance to hear from the pros, to learn their strategies and techniques and what works and what doesn't. And I got a little ins- inspiration. I actually got a chance to be an MC too. It was a cool thing. It was a working gig. But after a few years of being a keynote speaker and working my way up, I mean, from panelist to keynote to whatever, I wanted to be the showman. So I actually got me a shiny jacket like I was a part of the Morris Day in the time or one of the lost temptations as somebody said and I did everything everything but dance just about had a good time smoked a couple of cigars which was funny thing is um I smoked this Gurkha Maduro which I gotta go find that thing I've been holding it for a while somebody gave it to me and after the first night got on my balcony of the room it was still kind of chilly for Florida, they were all worried about it, but I was feeling pretty good. And I fired up this stogie, and it took my voice down, probably about two or three octaves. I was Barry White all day the first day. And 
when I walked up on the stage, instead of saying microphone, test one, two, test two, I started singing this. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Now imagine a room with probably about seven, eight hundred people in it, milling around trying to get their seat. And here's this guy in a blue jacket with glitter on it, singing this song as I walking up to the stage. And when I got to the middle, I stopped so that the audience can participate. And the first couple of rows of women had giant eyes like saucers. And it was quite amazing, actually. But aside from me filling a bucket list item, I got a chance to learn um, about being more purposeful, being more on point on what I'm trying to do. So this show, you'll notice, is a little bit shorter than normal. And I'm going to make sure that the future shows are just like that. A little shorter unless I got some really strong content or a really great interview. I'm not going to waste your time. And the high point of my weekend in Florida was I got a chance to hang out with Avery Skipalis from Skipalis's Tactical Solutions. She treated me like a long lost relative and helped me and we she was my wing person and I did the same for her. It was a great team effort. A couple of the days we actually were matching in colors and stuff, man. It was just cool. You thought we was trying to do something. It was it was great. All we were missing was Mike. Don't know who Avery is? Check this out. Hi, this is Avery, also known as Skip, with Skip's Tactical Solutions. I would love for you to check out my podcast called Skip's Tactical Solutions, and it can be found in all podcast players. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Skip's Tactical Solutions. And while you're at it, feel free to check out my website, that's SkipsTacticalSolutions.com. All right, Ken, back to you. Love, love, love Avery. And one of the things that actually came out of this podcast for me was that I realized that there's some stuff that I have that I never give to anybody. There's some solutions to problems. There's some information that I want to share still. That's not always about the gun. There's a lot of security stuff that's been going on in my life. I've been in security since I was a wee lad of uh, six or seven, actually. Yeah, I've been around. See, aside from being the black man with a gun, I was mama's oldest child. I was a hall monitor, a boy scout, a crossing guard, a lifeguard, a U.S. Marine, embassy guard, a police officer, a security guard, a protective security officer, a bodyguard, an armor bearer, and a pastor. And I know a thing or two about security, about maintaining um, safety and protecting what's important to you. So I'm going to create a brand new website, a brand new podcast called howtoprevail.com. I want you to join me if you're interested in what to do when the balloon goes up, when the stuff hits the fan, you know, emergency preparedness. That's what this show is going to be about. And I would love if you would come on the ride with me. It's going to be a little bit different from this show. All right. Howtoprevail.com. It's not up yet. You're getting a preview of it. And uh, please join dot how to prevail dot com to get on the list. You got that? Join dot how to prevail. That's P R E V A I L dot com to get on the list. When I start this thing, I want to start with about four or five people. So come on with me as we do a little leveraging of the black man with the gun empire. And don't forget, there's L. Segundo Edicto. There's Skip's Tactical Solutions. There's Mike Woodland's new podcast that you can find on Anchor FM. It's a family affair. And that's a song too. But let me stop before I start singing it. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm hoping that you are too. That's it for this week. And just in case nobody has told you this today. I love you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next week. Shalom, baby. Until next time, friends. To keep in touch with Ken and his cause, head over to blackmanwithagun.com.
Yeah, buddy.